Good morning. Good to be with you today as we begin the study of Mark's Gospel. Now, last week we concluded our study of Jeremiah and Lamentations in the Old Testament. So for the next 13 weeks we will study the Gospel of Mark. And before we do, I think it would be of value and of interest if we look a little bit into who this person, John Mark, is. One of the interesting things about Mark's gospel, as well as the other three gospels, is that the author of the book is not identified. And that's true in Mark's gospel. It is true in uh, Matthew, Luke, and John. Uh, the, they're not identified. So, but they aren't exactly autonomous because the early church uh, credited John Mark uh, as the author, and that has been uh, the belief uh, throughout the years. But when Mark opens up, he doesn't introduce us to to uh, Jesus. There is no uh, history, no lineage of Jesus. There is no uh, comment as far as his birth narrative is concerned. Uh, Mark just jumps in and uh, begins with uh, a, a study of, of John Mark. And I think it'd be a little uh, a bit interesting if we identify who John Mark is. He is a, a cousin of Barnabas. He was one of the first missionaries uh, that uh, began the journey with Paul. It was uh, Barnabas and, and, uh, and Mark. And as we look at the gospel, the first mention of of John Mark, we have to go somewhere else. And so let's begin by looking at the 12th chapter of, uh, of Acts. And we find the, a well-known story of Peter. Uh, he was in prison. Uh, people were gathered uh, to pray for him. And Suddenly, the shackles on him were loosened. Uh, he was wakened. An angel came to, to minister to him. So we pick it up in the 12th chapter of Acts in the 11th verse. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches, and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. So here is a, a very interesting beginning to Mark's gospel. First, we find that he was the son of, of, of this lady who is very well known, uh, Mary. Not to Mary, the mother of Jesus, but, but Mary. And uh, there are people gathered there praying uh, for Peter's release. So one thing we know, and that is that if Mary had people praying in her home that she was a very solid believer. Uh, we assume from that that, that Mary was uh, uh, providing guidance for, for uh, Mark, and Mark was then in his childhood uh, subject to, to teaching and was a believer himself. It's interesting that that Mark's nickname was Stump Finger, so he had some sort of 
handicap, uh, which was certainly a detriment for him and this this culture that were artisans that that constructed and made things and so early on uh, he was you know his life was not perfect despite this Christian upbringing and then we go to the next chapter to find out about Mark and we look uh, in the 13th chapter and in the 13th verse. Pro from Praphus, uh, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga and Pamphylia where John left them to return to Jerusalem. Uh, so uh, maybe the second stop in this missionary journey uh, John Mark quit and he went back home. We aren't told why he did. We don't know if there was a, a split uh, between he and Paul. It's just not shared with her, but barely into the first mission, uh, John Mark quit. Then following that, of course, uh, Paul continued his ministry and, and Mark did whatever Mark did, but Paul was teaching the Jews and there was a church conference and the church conference ruled that the Jews did not have to be circumcised in order to be believers in order to be followers of Jesus. And so we pick up again then in the 15th chapter of, of Acts and in the 36th verse. Sometime later it says, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing to further minister to them, to share the good news uh, with the Jews that they did not have to be circumcised and, and to give them further uh, training and instruction. Uh, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark, also called Mark, with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and not had not continued to work with them at that point. So it is apparent that there was some, some split, some uh, discomfort, and Paul wouldn't take uh, John Mark on the second mission trip. So there was a split in the team and Paul took Silas and Barnabas and John Mark went on their mission trip to do uh, whatever they wanted to do. And it was, it was silent then about exactly what Barnabas was doing and what John Mark was doing. But you can clearly see it was a failure uh, on this young John Mark's part and certainly was uh, devastating, humiliating to him that Paul would not take him on the second missionary journey because he didn't trust him. Well, about 10 years passed. And if we look at the end of, of Mark's uh, and Paul's and Barnabas' mission. If you look in uh, Philemon in the thirty or the twenty-third verse, uh, Paul writes, "Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so Mark." Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, 
my fellow workers. So something has transpired here that has brought Mark back into the fold. And then if we look again in 2 Timothy, uh, and if we look in the, the fourth chapter, and he is writing to Timothy. Again, Timothy is one of the last letters. We're toward the end of, of Paul's uh, mission trip, his ministry. And we see in here in the fourth chapter, in verse 9, and he's writing to Timothy. These all are Paul's letters. He's writing to Timothy. Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. So... They have all retired or deserted Paul, and the only one with him, the only one left, is Luke. Get Mark, he says. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. So here is a tremendous story of redemption of the young John Mark who failed early on in his ministry with Paul, but then continued to do his thing and is now back with uh, Paul and is a tremendous benefit to him. So now what about the gospel of Mark? It was written probably in the mid-60s. As I said, there's no biblical narrative. There is no lineage history. It just jumps right in in the first verse. But there are several things to, to look at here in this gospel. As I said, it was probably written about 30 years after the death of Jesus in the mid-60s. Uh, it begins with the Jews, not with Jesus. But there's a lot of suffering in Mark's gospel. Uh, it is alluded to often. Uh, there is a, an urgency. And we, we saw that in, in uh, the end there where he said, come quickly. And we see this repeated this urgency either in the form of at once or immediately or quickly. We see that 47 times in the short gospel of Mark, 16 chap chapters and 47 times. Paul uh, has this sense of urgency. Mark says, you know, do this and do it quickly. Uh, there is a secrecy. Uh, we see healing and Mark writing, uh, you know, don't say anything to anyone at this time. So there is a secrecy. There is a, a fear on Jesus' part, on the disciples' part. There is a, a lack of faith on the disciples' part. Uh, they still don't get it at this point. Uh, they are uncertain. Their, their faith is, is weak. And then we see uh, Jesus as human, and he, he is angry. He has compassion. He has hunger. Now, you wouldn't think about God, the Son of God, uh, being hungry, but clearly he eats. And he's anxious, too, in the garden where he prays to God, Father, is there any other way that we can do this? Is there a plan B? So he's anxious. We see that in Jesus as human, but we also see Jesus as the Son of God. The 
Savior. So beginning in verse 1, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So he is immediately identified as the Son of God, and that's it. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Well, how is he going to prepare the way? By calling people to repentance. And this is unique in that this is the only time in, in Mark's gospel that Old Testament is referred to. And he quotes both uh, Isaiah 43 and, and Malachi 3.1. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way. When kings traveled, and this area was rocky, it was dry, uh, it was inhabitable. And so when kings were going to travel, they would send someone out to clear off uh, the, the path, the road, by removing stones, by removing broken down carts, by removing obstacles that would, would cause the king's way to be difficult and un uncomfortable. So preparing the way, smoothing out the road, calling people to repentance. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Jesus is coming. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And this is where the Jordan River uh, uh, dumped in to uh, the Dead Sea. So he was out in this desert and he was, he was preaching repentance and he was calling people to be baptized and people were coming to hear the word and to, to be baptized to, for the uh, re repentance and forgiveness of sins. And John was clothing, was made of camel hair and a lot and he ate Locusts, and he had uh, wild honey with that, and there was a leather belt around his waist. And this, if you recall the stories of Elijah and Second King, Elijah was dressed this way as well. And and Second King said uh, that there would be someone like Elijah coming, and so John is that individual. He is dressed in camel hair and he has a leather uh, belt around his waist. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I. The thongs or, uh, or th tape uh, wrapping of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. This was a job that sometimes slaves would even would not even do, uh, to untie the strap on a sandal. This was very manual work. And, and John Mark is saying, you know, uh, John is not even going to do that. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals 
I am not worthy to stoop down untie. And he says, I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So in these first eight verses, we see uh, John the baptizer being alluded to here in Mark's gospel. And he is introducing John as the precursor, the one preparing the way for Jesus. And then in verse 9, at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And so we read different accounts. There is only one Jesus. There is only one uh, version here in Mark, but there are four, four versions. But Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Other gospels say that John protested and said, no, you need to baptize me, speaking to Jesus. And in verse 10, as Jesus was coming out of the water, of course, he came out suddenly, he saw heaven being torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Many have said that the Trinity is not taught in the New Testament. And there, that is true. There is no specific uh, section of scripture that teaches the Trinity, but it is presented in all of the New Testament. And here we see as Jesus coming out of the water, that's one, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove, that's two. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love and am well pleased. Number three, God the Father. So while there is no specific teaching saying this is the Trinity, it is presented as it is here in, John, in Mark's gospel uh, as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here we see in verse 12, one of those urgency messages. And as I said, it is used 47 times in this short 16 chapter gospel. At once, the Spirit sent him into the desert and he was in the desert 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and angels attended him. And that was it. A very brief description of the experience of Jesus. There was no temptation to uh, jump off of the temple. There was no uh, temptation to to turn stones into food. Uh, it was a very brief description. Mark just went right through it. You know, he was baptized, he went to the desert, he was tempted, end of story. And we know in Mark's gospel because it uses this urgency that he's getting through the only 16 chapters, so he's got a lot to say in a very short period of time. But the 40 days, of course, 
reminds us of of the wilderness experience of the people of Israel. It, it, it's a number that is, it is common in Scripture. So we see here in Mark's Gospel this introduction of what is to come. It is the introduction of, of Jesus. It is an introduction of his temptation and we look forward next week to studying further uh, Mark's gospel. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this uh, very informative lesson and study of the person of John Mark, uh, the introduction of Jesus, the, the reference to Malachi and Isaiah, the, the history of Scripture and the relationship between Old Testament and New. Uh, Father, we ask that you would use it uh, to inform us, to use us to share the good news. Uh, Father, we pray for those recovering from surgery. We pray for those that are traveling and we ask father that you would bless the leaders of our church and pray that you would guide them that you would bless them with your presence and your word your insight your wisdom father we thank you for jesus and for his word and i ask that we be used uh, to share the good news that Jesus is Lord. All of these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.